Welcome gurus. I am Jacob West, the self-development guru here to help you unlock the power within. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about how to overcome genetic defects. I just want people to realize that you are not stuck. You are not fixed. You have the ability to change. We aren't born with problems that are impossible to overcome. You can overcome your genetic defects. Towards the end of the video, I'm going to be sharing a very personal photo of mine and it's going to tie together everything introduced in this video. Uh, please be sure to watch through the video and you'll see how everything connects at the end. The purpose of this video is not to scare anyone or enable people to self-diagnose themselves. It's to inform people about the disorder Marfan syndrome. But please seek medical advice or a doctor if you have any further questions or want to learn more about this subject. I've done my own research about it and I can tell my story, but I am not a doctor. I am not a health expert. Please go seek them out if you happen to have a lot of these symptoms and are worried about anything. So I am by no means an expert on this subject. I'm just going to read off the definition of Marfan syndrome and signs and symptoms of it. Just run through it real fast just because... All, all of these things could honestly be covered in a separate video in detail, but I'll let a medical professional do that. Marfan syndrome. It's a genetic mutation that affects the connective tissue. A defect in the gene which helps produce a protein to give your connective tissue its elasticity and strength. This disorder affects the heart, the eyes, blood vessels, and bones. And here's some signs of Marfan syndrome. Tall and skinny, disproportionate, disproportionately, that's a hard word to say, long arms and legs. Long arms, legs, and fingers. A sternum which either indents or protrudes out. A high arched palate and crown teeth, heart murmurs, extreme nearsightedness, abnormally curved spine, flat feet, lens dislocation, retinal problems, glaucoma or cataracts, more eye problems, and then improper development of the ribs. Here are some pictures of Marfan syndrome and the signs and symptoms of it, definitely go check out the mayoclinic.org. I'm leaving the link in the description below, but here are some photos. Feel free to pause to get a better look at any of the photos shared in this video. At this point in the video, some of you may be saying, so what? Like Marfan syndrome has all of these defects and problems associated with it, but you can live with those problems. But here's the big issue. It's potentially dangerous and risky. What can happen? There's, there's three huge things that can happen. One is an aortic aneurysm. What that means is you have high blood pressure, which causes the wall of your aorta to bulge out. And that can lead to another problem called a Two, an aortic dissection. Due to that bulging, the layers of the aorta can tear, causing blood to flow out, which can be potentially fatal. And three, there can be heart valve dysfunctions, which means your heart has to pump harder to have blood, throw, have blood flow throughout your body which means that you could have heart failure. All of these things can lead to an early death, which means that it's highly likely and recommended that preventative surgery is done. I'll be honest, 
this subject is very personal to me because at a young age, I was already showing signs of Marfan syndrome and my doctors pointed out the different signs and eventually I even visited a cardiologist to make sure that my heart's okay. And as, of, as I know right now, my heart seems to be fine. But I really want to bring awareness to this disorder and I wanted to open up and share my story. But the biggest thing, I want to empower all of you because no matter what illness, disease, genetic disorder that you have, you have the power to change and overcome it no matter how bad it is. But ultimately, it comes down to you. The first thing, you have to be willing to see it as a problem. If you don't see it as a problem, then why would you go out of your way to change it? Everything seems fine. Second thing, it's you. It doesn't matter if everyone else around you is trying to change it. It comes down to you. You have to put the energy, the time, the effort, and find the tools and resources to change and overcome. And if you're fine with your problem, that's perfectly okay. That's perfectly okay. But I'm telling you that I am not a victim of my situation. I am not a victim of my genes. I choose to fight back and overcome these challenges, obstacles, and problems. And now I just want to quickly go through from toe to head the genetic defects or just physical defects I, I have right now. And the first one, it's not relating to Marfans. This one's kind of funny. About three years ago, I developed this nasty toenail fungus and I've gone through over-the-counter medications, I've been prescribed different things, I've used tea tree oil, but none of it pierces deep enough getting rid of the fungus. The nice thing is, my toes used to be purple, and now they're green, they're still super disgusting, and I'm gonna leave a photo right now of how my toes look. Yuck! Eventually, I want to tackle each individual symptom of Marfan syndrome and see what lifestyle changes can I make to make changes. But right now, my first project is to get rid of those nasty toenail, nasty toenails, to get rid of that fungus. And why not make, turn your physical and mental problems into fun challenges and products? We all have the ability to adapt, grow, and change. Now on to some other defects. My left hip makes this like popping noise and kind of pops out of place when I do certain movements. My feet are flat. I have pancake feet. <laughs> my, my rib cage is abnormal in its high, higher in placement than what is normal. And then also my body as a whole is asymmetric, like super obviously asymmetric. My, like you, you'll, you'll definitely see what I mean by that, but the left side and right side, definitely not even close to being symmetrical. Alrighty, now onto other symptoms. I have an indent in my chest, my sternum indents. And growing up, I used to be teased by my brother, my friends, and they told me, can you pour milk and eat cereal out from your chest cavity? Can you use your chest as a bowl to put guacamole in there and eat chips out of it? It's very disgusting. I've seen it happen. Mine's not as severe. And that's something I want people to know is that my Marfan syndrome is not as severe as what other people have experienced and my heart goes out to them. I can relate in some ways, but and they have it worse in some areas and I, I wish them the best with doing the best that they can. But yeah, the, the chest cavity and that used to be a huge insecurity of mine. And then another thing, I've had left upper back pain and it's right where my heart is and it, that kind of worries me. It's almost like 
okay, is this pain like a muscle tear, muscle stress from boxing and just doing push-ups? Or is this an aortic aneurysm? Is this an aortic dissection? Kind of makes me wonder if I should go see the cardiologist again. But yeah, chest cavity, um, upper left back pain, and then onto the head and the face. I used to have really bad teeth until I ha- uh, got braces. I had crown teeth and a, a high palate, and braces definitely helped out with that. But in ways, I still have a nasally voice. I don't know if you can tell. And then with my, with my eyes, I have nearsightedness. I've been working on my vision, trying to improve it. But also, my right eye is a lazy eye. And now that I tell everyone that, I feel like everyone will just see that in the videos because I feel like it was an issue only I saw. But now everyone's going to see it. And it's going to be so hard to miss that my right eye just doesn't move as much and isn't as active as my left. With everything I've shared in this video, at this point you might say, Jacob, you're screwed. There's too many problems. You can't really do much to change your situation. And maybe to an extent, maybe to an extent that's true. But I'm very stubborn. Very stubborn. And why not turn your problems into projects? Why not? Let's just see. And here's what I consider conquering your genetics and beating the odds. If you can make it so that you found a solution to every problem that you have and in a sense you function like a normal human being, then that's what I call beating the odds and conquering your genetics. Now, I'm going to read off what physical defects I have conquered because even though I do have a lot of problems, I've made progress and there were other things that I was born with and stuck with that I've improved tremendously or beaten entirely. One, patellar tendonitis. My patella band on both of my knees used to act up and it was so bad that I had to wear knee bands and it really hurt going up stairs, going on hikes, doing runs and my solution to that I just started to become more active and run more and just be really active and exercise every day. But the biggest thing that I did is I changed the way I ran. Since I have flat feet, pancake, I made it so that now I run on my tippy toes. And the result of that, it kind of created an arch in my foot and I no longer experience any knee pain Because now I'm running properly instead of putting all that stress on my patella bands, causing me to have pain and making it hard to walk. So I've I've conquered one thing just simply by changing how I run. The next thing, I've dislocated both of my knees. What I've done for that is I've strengthened my legs. I've done more lower body training to strengthen my knees and build that elasticity and strength in my connective tissue from my knees. The next thing is I've improved my spine a lot just by focusing on my posture. I used to have like a somewhat of an S-shaped spine, Um, scoliosis. I had mild scoliosis, but I've done a lot to improve my posture, which has helped out my spine tremendously. And the next thing is my vision Normally, vision gets worse with age, but by making lifestyle changes with my diet and the way I use my eyes, I've been able to gain better vision. And I hope one day to train my eyes, especially my right eye, where the lazy eye and the lens dislocation is, to basically regain 2020 vision. That's one of my big goals. And I've made a lot of progress with my lazy eye as a whole. I also conquered my teeth problem, but I didn't do it on my own. I sought out a orthodontist and I got braces at a young age and wore my retainers and that seriously helped out with my teeth. And now I've 
perfectly straight teeth. But one thing I want to say with that, there, even though braces and retainers help me get straight teeth, I had a really dorky smile still. I did not know how to smile. It took hours just to get a smile. And what I did, I, I, I might as well throw this into the video because I've already shared worse pics, but I'll share a picture of me, the early days of smiling. This was last summer before I really knew how to smile properly. And it's really funny seeing the progress like day one to where I am today. I, I spent like three months smiling pretty much every day, taking three selfies and my smile really developed. Here's, here's that picture. Boom shakalaka. Now onto the main event of this video. Growing up, I was a 70 pound seventh grader. I was one of the shortest in elementary, one of the smallest. I was very scrawny, didn't have a lot of muscles. And even as a freshman, I was 105 pounds and I would just get train wrecked and mauled by everybody because they were so much bigger than me. And the biggest thing that I did is I found a form of exercise that I enjoyed and I stuck with it. I made changes in my diet because 80% of your body is sculpted in the kitchen, 20% by hard work and exercise and just other lifestyle improvements. And I used to be super insecure about my body with the hole in my chest, with the disproportionate figure, with all these uh, physical defects. I was super insecure about my body. It was hard taking off my shirt and going swimming. But here's what I want everyone to know. Turn your weaknesses into strengths. My body used to be one of my greatest weaknesses, but I have sculpted it and crafted it into one of my greatest strengths. So even though I have an abnormal figure, I am very proud of my body and anyone can do it. Whether you are skinny or fat, any body type, just find a form of exercise you enjoy and make some diet changes. Those are my two big tips and you can craft an elite athletic figure. Here is that photo. The power within. Wowza, you made it to the end of the video. If you are still here and you watched through the entire video, just comment down below, problems into projects. Problems into projects. And that's my one big key takeaway from this video. Turn your problems into projects. We all have the capability and the capacity to change, grow, and evolve. Thank you for watching this video. Have a blessed day. And as always, stay strong.